Hello everyone, my name is Tyler and this is Aftertouch Audio. This is the last installment of where we go over BGs and we go over um, all the little odds and ends within the actual template series itself. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Okay, before we get started, if you would like to go ahead and support this channel, consider checking out the link in the description below where we have dozens of sound effects libraries catered for your professional needs. Here is my actual BG template, and if anyone has seen my ambience cutting video, this is going to be quite familiar to you, but I'll, I'll go into a little bit more depth on how uh, the actual routing and how you actually cut BGs in uh, this video here. So let's open up the BG template, and you'll see right away there's a, there's a little bit going on here, but this is how basically industry standard uh, uh, 5.1 stereo mixes, That's this is how they're set up. So we have the BG master right at the front. Then we have the BGA and the BGB. Those are the three group masters there. I'll pull up the little graphic here as per the rest of my videos to show you how the routing goes, where all the tracks are, how tracks are laid out, and where they actually go to. So uh, moving into this actual template, uh, I'll open up the BG master to show you where the routing's at. We have the BG master, which then goes into the SFX master, which again is used to create your MNEs, which is all of your effects and your music put together. Or if you just need an effects stem, you can effectively have your Foley, your uh, sound effects, and your BGs go all into one file. Then that goes to my stereo master, which then goes to my stereo outs. So that is where all that stuff lives. Pretty straightforward. And then if we go into the actual BGA submix, you'll see that it is following the exact same uh, guidelines as the rest of it. BGA goes in the BG master, BG master goes in the SFX master, which then goes to my stereo masters. And you'll notice again in the sends, uh, same with the music, I don't have the delays on them. Uh, that's strictly because I, I haven't found that I've really needed delays on BGs. The BGs are just, are just supposed to be that nice bed of ambience. But I do, in fact, use reverb every now and then to kind of help blend all the BG elements together into a single room or a car or whatever. It, I, I find the reverbs really, really help in that instance as well, uh, especially when you want to go ahead and use the same reverb um, as what your dialogue is doing on on your BG so everything kind of just blends together smoothly. So let's go into the tracks because this is where it gets a little bit more uh, complicated and I'll kind of explain what's going on. And as always, markers. Always markers. Okay, so we have four mono audio tracks which make up your actual um, mono BGs. And I, I've got a great question the other day about um, if you're working in a stereo mix, why do you need mono BGs? Um, it's a great question. Um, but effectively, all, all it really means is your help filling up that spectrum, right? If you just have a left and right BG, your dialogue is center. It, it still feels like there's a hole in the center, right? So by having um, BGs that are pan hard left, hard right, and then ones that are, you know, in both um, ears, you end up having that phantom center as well, which makes life a lot easier and stuff like that. And I, I, I work in 5.1 here, as you might be able to see back there. Maybe it'll help translate your mix up as well. But in working in 5.1, this actual track layout is the exact same way, except you would convert two of your stereo tracks into uh, surround soundtracks. And which is why I have the color coding template uh, the way that I do. But if I'm working in stereo and that's all I need, I can convert all six of those into just uh, my left and rights. So we have four mono audio tracks, and then we have six uh, six <laughs> stereo uh, audio tracks for the BGA and BGB sides. And, if, and effectively, that's really it. Uh, if you want to see like an in-depth tutorial on like cutting BGs and stuff like that, again, click Crash's head up there. He'll take you right to it. But um, when you cut BGs, you want to checkerboard them up and down. So having a BGA and a BGB side is super, super helpful. I have seen uh, templates that utilize a BGC which is mostly for like corrections and fixes. So like if uh, the cut were to change and then they added a new scene in between your two cuts, you can then go ahead and just cut that new scene on BGC rather than now having to then flip your whole mix going up and down, up and down, up and down the whole way down. Uh, it, it is a big pain in the ass. So oftentimes I will also go ahead and include a BGC uh, mix in this here, which again, just includes duplicating BGB or BGA into making a new BGC. It's really weird <laughs> saying that, but that's effectively how it works. That is basically the routing for the BGs. It's it's pretty straightforward. You don't have to utilize all of the tracks. And I want to make that very, very, very clear. If If you've cut four tracks for a car scene to make your BGs and that works, don't try and fill the other six tracks. It doesn't make any sense. Uh, just cut what your what what the scene calls for rather than going ahead and just trying to fill up all the tracks. If you want to add extra alternative tracks to your mix, go for it and then you can mute them and then you can decide whether or not to actually add those in or not, which, which is sometimes appreciated by mixers and stuff like that. But it, it's really just like cut what you need rather than cut just because you have tracks to fill. So 
the last part of my template, and this is something that's uh, pretty straightforward on, on, on my book, is an AAF backup. So when I import uh, an AAF into my session, I want to go ahead and make sure that I have the raw track still enabled. So I will actually import the AAF onto these 50 blank audio tracks. There's nothing on them. They, they don't route anywhere. The reason for this being is, is if I accidentally commit something to a track and I don't need to go back on a version, I don't have to re-import the entire AAF into the session. I have it right here. And if I need more tracks, I can just make more tracks. And then when I'm working, I just hide this folder. So let's quickly go ahead and just make everything uh, visible and to show you guys how the actual full template works. And I will go ahead and open up everything so you guys can see in full context everything that this template has to offer. So here is a full template. We have dialogue at the top. We come down and we have music and then we have Foley. And then I have the wonderful sound effects section, which takes up the majority of the extra tracks. We then go into the BG section, which takes up a good chunk of the tracks. And then we have the AAF backup section. And I'll quickly go ahead and show you guys my mixer uh, in full view. So if I, if I show all, all tracks themselves, uh, I do have my dialogue tracks hidden just for the sake of this video, because I usually have my mixer on my widescreen. So if I show you guys my dialogue tracks, um, they are uh, locked to the uh, left side of the screen. That way I can go ahead and always see what's going on in my dialogue tracks, but I, I will hide them for this section, but I'll just show you guys what's, what, what they look like with all the plugins on them and all, and all that fun stuff on there. So I'll hide that right quick. And then I will go ahead and start from the very, very top of the section and slowly kind of just work my way down as I kind of talk uh, to you guys about what is actually going on behind the scenes here. Okay, so as we go through the actual template itself, you'll see that there are uh, not a whole lot of plugins going on. Um, the reason for that being is because I like to go ahead and mix as I go, only loading the absolute essentials that I need, some compression, some EQ, um, but really not a whole lot else. You can get away with a lot with just compression and EQ, panning, all that fun stuff. Uh, I have my ISL2, I have my limiters and all that fun stuff. And I will quickly go ahead and show you guys my uh, Stereo Master as well. On there, I have the ISL2, which is on all of my tracks or all of my master tracks themselves. It's just my true peak limiter to help catch any additional peaks when going ahead and actually mastering the actual track itself. And then I have a uh, new gen ISL2. And that is my actual loudness meter that I actually go ahead and use to make sure that I'm in compliance with everything else. Ulean is also a great substitute for this because um, I know this one is quite expensive. Keep in mind that that is basically the template. So actually, I forgot to mention one more thing about this template. Um, at the back end of the template, I actually have an additional part to this template. Um, and that is, I simply have ready to mix finished BGs. So, or already mixed finished BGs. So when you look at the template here, you'll see that I have I, lots of just pre-made BGs all ready to go, all ready to be cut into the actual project itself. And this grows a lot bigger. I started at the two hour mark and stuff like that, but that effectively goes ahead and makes sure that I can quickly go ahead and cut a scene with BGs that I've already done versus trying to create a brand new thing for let's say a new movie or a feature film or even just a bunch of hallmarks and stuff like that. So that's the last part of the template. And that is uh, what I work with in all, all areas of, of how I mix. Whether or not I'm just a sound effects editor, I will just use the sound effects portion of this template. So I will get rid of everything that isn't the sound effects section and then I will just work on that. Or if I'm just working on dialogue, I will keep the dialogue section. Or if I'm working on Foley, I will keep the Foley section. And it's a very modular template. So whether the project is super big or super small, working in a standardized workflow is just the way to go. And it saves you a lot of time and it effectively will help speed up your workflow and get, get you to be a better sound designer. So. Anyways, I hope you guys have enjoyed this series. Uh, it's been a lot of fun making it. Uh, by the way, I am on template version 4.1. The template is always evolving. It's always moving up. I'm always adding new plugins and stuff like that. And I will uh, keep you guys up to date on anything new that has changed within the template. So go make some noise. Did you see it?